When things are very difficult, it is very hard for us to focus. Sometimes, when things are very challenging, it is challenging to even pray. Now, as we are going through the Navigating Future series, we're going through、uh, the book of Revelation. And we know that uh, uh, disasters, war, and、uh, disease, and all the difficult things that we're going through right now are not comparable to the difficult time of tribulation in the future. So, when we go through, if we go through tribulation, is it even possible for us to focus and depend on the Lord through prayer? Now, today we're going to look at, look at、uh, Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 through 6, and we will see in the midst of all the difficulties and trials, we see the prayer. So, let's look at today's passage together. It says, When the Lamb broke the seventh seal, there was A silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel came and stood at the altar, holding a golden censer. And much incense was given to him, so that he might add, add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, with the prayers of the saints, went up before God out of the angel's hand. And then the angel Took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. And there followed peals of thunder and sounds and,、uh, and the flashes of lightning and,、uh, and of the、uh, earthquake. And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. Revelation 8 through 1 through 6. So there are two points I want to draw from this passage. The first one is prayer, the second one is punishments. So let's look at one by one. So the first one is prayer. Let's go back to today's passage and just go、uh, verse by verse. When the Lamb, who is the Lamb, the Jesus Christ, he broke the seventh seal. If you remember chapter six, we learned six seals, and then each, when, when the, each seal was broken, Then there was a the disaster、uh, after disaster happening. And there was a silence in heaven for about half an hour. When the seventh seal was about to be broken. So, what happens here is the big silence for about 30 minutes. Now, imagine that if you're in a courtroom and when there's a big sentence was given to a criminal and there's an awe and struck and the,、uh, there's a silence because of the heaviness of the sentence where there could be a shock. No, but this one is much more serious because this is a heavenly court. And then we see that the seventh seal has so much. Uh, tribulation, so many tribulations in it. So in verse 2, and I saw the seven angels would stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Now, when it comes to the trumpet, you might think that, oh, this is going to be a party, this could be a great concert or jazz concert, but that is not the case because in the book of in the Bible, The trumpet is normally used for、uh, summoning,、uh, the gathering people for war or the different kind of task. In this, in this context, this, is, this trumpet is for the,、uh, the judgment. It's about announcing the upcoming punishment, okay? Previously, there were seven angels. So, this another angel is the eighth angel, came and stood at the altar, holding a golden censer and much incense. So, look at this word, incense. What is this incense? It was given to him so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar, which was before the throne. So, we can see in verse 3 that this golden incense. In a golden censer with the incense. Now, incense was the kind of smoke, but this smoke is really the prayers of not the partial saints, saints or the Jewish only, but it's all the saints. We saw in the previous chapter, which is chapter 7, 144,000 Jewish people and also the,、uh, the multitude of the ethnicities. They are the,、uh, the Gentiles. The, all the saints were praying. And these、uh, prayers were given.、Uh, so, this image, look at this image here altar and the incense 
and the throne and uh, we can this is kind of imagery of the Old Testament the priesthood the priestly sacrifice when the priests were burning the in, uh, burning the animal or sacrificial animal the uh, incense the smoke was going up to the sky and there was the pleasing aroma to the Lord so we can see this uh, this is kind of a sacrifice but we see in the New Testament um, in the uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 that Jesus Christ is the sacrifice that was pleasing to the Lord because Jesus is the perfect and last sacrifice. In the Hebrews chapter 10, 10, that Jesus died once for all and he gave his body as a once for all perfect sacrifice. So there's no need, there's no additional sacrifice, there is no need for animal sacrifice anymore because Jesus is perfect and he's perfect, his sacrifice is perfect and he is the perfectly uh, offering perfect offering to the Lord, pleasing to the Lord. But also, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 15, we see that uh, we, in Christ Jesus, are also pleasing to the Lord. We are also uh, aroma, sweet aroma to the Lord. And then we see today's passage that the saints, the prayers of the saints are the sweet aroma. This is the offering. This is the smoke incense to the Lord. So what do we see uh, from here? The prayer is the incense, this uh, sweet aroma to the Lord, and also it is given to the Lord. So that it shows that Jesus, uh, the, the God is receiving our prayer. And it's not just, uh, He is not just receiving it, but He is pleased with this prayer. This incense is going up to the Lord. So we have to understand that our prayers are not neglected, but it is heard by God. So what a wonderful passage this is. But also, we need to uh, remember in chapter 6, there were six seals and there was a disasters and martyrdom and today's passage in chapter 8, we will see and from chapter 8, through chapter 19, we'll see the seven seals were broken and all kinds of tribulations are going uh, going on. But at the same time, we need to know in chapter 7, chapter 7 was like an interlude and it was the praise by the 144,000 Jewish people and the multitude of ethnicities, the, uh, the uh, Gentiles. Then in today's, pas today's passage, verse three, verses 3 and 4, talking about the prayer. So praise and prayer are in between the six seals and seven seals. So with that, we in the tribulation, in the midst of tribulation, we see the praise and prayer. So what does that really tell us? It, it tells us that no matter how difficult times or difficult tribulation they might go through, there is the prayer. There needs to be the prayer. As, it, uh, as I begin with the, uh, the introduction, that when things are not going well, it is very easy for us to be discouraged and when you are discouraged so much that there you don't even have the energy to pray but that should not be the case tribulation must be even much more difficult than any difficulties from pain or sufferings that uh, people who are going through right now however there is the prayer in the midst of prayer that uh, in the midst of difficulties we must pray even more so that's what uh, the, that's what the saints uh, the Christians, the born again, regenerated Christians must do. But at the same time, we see the punishment. So let's look at the following verses together. In verse 4, And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. Then, so this is what uh, after uh, the prayer, then the angel took the censer, so this is the same censer, right? And filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. And there followed peals of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and the earthquake. And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. Amen. Now we see the total shift here. Now these, this is the same angel. Uh, holding the same sensor, but this time he is filling up the fire and then instead of burning something to go up to the sky, but he is throwing this fire into the ground. 
Hmm. What do you see here? This is the fire of judgment. And we see the uh, list of the, diff the, uh, the disasters after disasters and war after the war. And so many people are killed and all kinds of graphic and dramatic uh, tribulation is following uh, with this. So we need to look at this, uh, this in the context that uh, the fire, you know, not every fire is good. Because this fire is the fire of judgment. Now, this is like um, in the uh, Leviticus chapter 10, Aaron's two sons. I mean, they were called to offer the sacrifice to the Lord, and they were called, they were commissioned to a bring the right fire uh, unto the Lord. But they brought a wrong fire, and then God did not receive it. God was not pleased with it, and God killed uh, them with that fire. So we see that that fire is not a uh, fire to prune us, or it was not a fire for the sacrifice, but it was the fire for the punishment. And we see the same f uh, similar fire that coming from the f heaven, which was the uh, fire upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, that was the fire that was to destroy that city. But we see here in this, in this chapter, this is not just a regional uh, fire, but it was the worldwide uh, punishment, the fire that will lead to Revelation 8, 21, 8, the lake of fire. So we see that this fire is very, very destructive fire that will be forever, for eternity. Now, but also, we need to know that this same angel was just um, the uh, giving or the raising the incense unto the Lord. So to have the incense, to have the smoke, there must be some fire. Just like the Old Testament priest, there were burning incense through the burning, the sacrificial animals. Likewise, there must be the fire of burning to, to, to burn something. Now, the, the Holy Spirit is poured upon, was poured upon the, uh, the people of the, the, the God, the Jesus' disciples, 120 disciples. If you look at the Acts chapter 1 and 2, after, right after Jesus was um, crucified and he was risen from the dead and Jesus showed to uh, more than 500 people and then Jesus has ascended to heaven. But yet, there was still uncertainty and there are still um, upcoming persecutions against the Christians. However, these Christians, instead of being scattered, they were gathered together to pray and the Holy Spirit was poured upon them in the form of fire. And then they became witnesses of Jesus Christ. They began to proclaim the gospel of Christ Jesus in different languages. And they became ambassadors. They became witnesses for Christ Jesus, for sure. And then we see that. So, and then also, Roman, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that we must live a living sacrifice. We are given to the Lord. So we are like the being filled with the Holy Spirit, who is like a fire. And He is pruning us. He is purifying us. He is sanctifying us. And He is making us as His witnesses and ambassadors. Our life Life is totally given to Him as a living sacrifice. So our prayer, our prayer and everything that we do is dedication unto the Lord. So this is like a sacrifice. That is a good fire. The Holy Spirit brings us, gives us, and pours out, pours out His fire upon us so that we would be sanctified and purified. But in today's passage, this fire from this angel, this angel was throwing this fire to pronounce the judgment unto the earth. What kind of people? There, this fire is for those who rebel against God. They refuse to repent of their sins, but they were continually worshiping their own idols instead of worshiping God. They were following their own ways, and they were proud and st uh, stubborn-hearted and stiff-necked and always the refusing to come to Jesus Christ. And these people, no matter what kind of a wonderful, luxurious places they were living in and enjoying their entertainment, they will be punished. But not just temporarily, but they will be punished forever in the lake of fire. So we will see the more series of devastating, catastrophic the uh, disasters and tribulations warning so we have to uh, look into it not to scare ourselves but to be prepared for that so how should we live with all of this first of all we need to live a life of prayer but when do you pray 
Sometimes you know Christians they pray only on Sundays because Sunday is the church day and then only Sunday and we feel like when you go to church and when you pray and that's the best time that God may answer uh, God may listen to that prayer and answer to that prayer on Sunday morning better than other time that is not the case remember what kind of when this prayer the incense was given to the Lord it was during the tribulation okay so in the in the midst of all the difficulties and the trials instead of being discouraged instead of being uh, uh, swayed, we must be intentional in prayer. In Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 7, without worries and without all those things, we must, uh, with thanksgiving, we need to bring the petition to the Lord. In other words, we need to pray, and the peace of God will guard our heart. And God will take care of us, and God is going to be with us. So we must be uh, continually to be praying. In First Samuel chapter twelve, uh, verse twenty-three, Samuel decided to pray continually without ceasing, so that he is, he he showed a great example of a prayer, prayer life. You no, know, when things are not going well, when things are going well, no matter what situations we are in, you are in, you and I must be praying continually. And a second, we must we must know how devastating this punishment is. Now, from Genesis, uh, the Revelation chapter 8 through uh, chapter 19, we'll see the series of the punishment. And that is definitely a heavy punishment from the Lord. We must not neglect that. We must not avoid that. So we must understand the depth of this punishment, and we need to give a warning about that. Not only for us to be pre- uh, prepared through prayer, but we must uh, proclaim the upcoming uh, difficulties and trials and tribulation to the world. But the problem is, it's not the lack of resources in the church, but the lack of warning. What's the, what's what does what do I mean that you know when you go to church you know people mostly expect the good and encouraging and charming messages so that they can live another week with a hopeful message but if I just pronounce the upcoming uh, disasters or the tribulation who would want to listen to the kind of message however this is the truth this is not made up this is what's going to happen in the future of course there are some uh, interpretation about the the uh, the types of tribulation and all that but one for sure is the difficult time is coming now we are already going through a lot of difficulties like uh, disease and war and uh, all, ki- all kinds of uncertainties however the tribulation will be even more painful more difficult more challenging it is coming Jesus is coming so we must tell the world what is going to happen think about Noah's time Noah kept telling people that there will be a great, great flood, but nobody paid attention to that. Only his family were saved. So it, but Noah did his job, and we must be the same way. We must give warning to the people that there will be great tribulation. So people need to repent, turn away from their sin, and they need to turn to the Lord as soon as possible before it is too late. So we must live a life of ambassador. Yes, we must pray and believing that our prayers are being listened to and being heard and our prayers are answered. And God is going to answer our prayers in His time, in His perfect way. So we must we we can just trust in him and seek him, but at the same time we must share the gospel where the gospel is not preached. We must give a right warning to the people. People may not believe it. People may not see see that there will be no great fire. It's just like the Noah's time. And uh, uh, but we must be persistent. We must be faithful in delivering this message of. Uh, not only the punishment, but also the way, the solution. The solution, the way is this, Jesus Christ. It's very simple. Yeah, you need to turn away from your sin and turn to Jesus. Believe in Him and follow Him all the days of your life. And then that's the only way that we can go through all this tribulation uh, victoriously for God's glory. So let's pray and let's share the gospel of Christ Jesus. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for this wonderful message. Father, we pray that we will be always prepared for future. But instead of being discouraged about upcoming tribulation, but we will be praying 
because even during the, all the uh, tribulation, there will be a praise and there will be a prayer. So, Father, please help us to live out that. But also, Father, let us warn not only to understand about the depth of this punishment, but we will be able to go out and share the gospel of Christ Jesus. But we need to give the right warning to them so that their hearts would be softened and their hearts would be turned back to you. Instead of being worried, they would turn away from their sin and turn to you, and then they can give their lives to you so that their lives would be transformed and saved. Father, help us and guide us, Lord. We thank you, praise you. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen.